I believe we're going live. I did a little test run this morning, loaded on a new OBS. There we are, there we are. We got the live stream going. Sweet. Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another live stream. Today, today, today is November 2nd. 2020 and we're doing a live stream open discussion on julian assange and wikileaks and we have done a few of these in the past and this is uh, part nine that we are doing right now and uh, we started this off uh, i'm not sure how long ago uh, a while ago we've talked about julian assange and wikileaks a lot over the last uh, i guess 15 years uh, julian wikileaks came on board uh, or came live in 2008 i believe 2007 2008 maybe 2009 and 2010 they released uh, uh iraq war logs and the uh, collateral murder and whatnot and when i was blogging i was writing about uh, julian assange and whistleblowers and edward snowden and manning and whatnot and when we started uh, live streaming, um, slowly uh, people wanted to start talking about uh, politics. So we started covering politics. And one of the most important things taking place in the world right now is what's happening with Julian Assange. Trial of the century. Nothing else comes close to this. Nothing else comes close to this. Uh, as far as the impact that is going to have on our societies. So we are covering it. Zarek, how are you doing? Hey, Chicho, been excited for this one. Free Assange, free Assange, me too, me too. And gang, we have a whole bunch of stuff that we're going to read through in the next couple of days in a two-day live stream. There is, uh, by the way, I got bad news, uh, sad news. Robert Fisk, uh, this gentleman right here, one of the greatest reporters of all time. Okay, he passed away um, today or it was yesterday maybe. Uh, in the last 24 hours uh, the journalistic community has lost a tremendous warrior okay and uh, majority of people uh, should if you haven't read heard listened to robert fisk you need to and what we're going to do we're going to start off this two-day uh, julian assange wikileaks discussion by reading uh, Robert Frisk article that he wrote regarding Julian Assange, the, the final punishment of Julian Assange, and he put this out on June 3rd, uh, 2019. Uh, I thought it was a fantastic article, and it sort of lays down the groundwork of what we've talked about previously and what we are going to get into, which is sort of a summary of what's going on. Birdie here, what's up? How's it going, Birdie here? Hope you're doing well. Um, just so you know, I you know the the chat that you're going to see is just the chat that's going to appear here i don't have it overlaying on top of the video so i'm just going to try to keep this going as much as possible when i'm reading i'll have this chat open but when i'm flipping between windows and stuff i haven't figured out how to keep the chat uh on the front pinned to the top right so um we'll keep it like this okay and um what do you call it uh, we will be looking at a few different things in the next two days i'm not sure how much of this we're going to get through but there's a few articles so let me give you a lowdown of what we're going to go through and then while we wait for people to roll in i'm going to give you guys a little intro but for those that are going to be watching this video on bitchute and youtube this is going on youtube um, let me give you a lowdown of our articles and videos that we're going to look at in the next couple of days i might add a couple of more as well carlos how are you doing yo what's up i didn't get a notification for this hopefully it'll come out by the way um i just when i went to set things up this morning through ops i couldn't get my display to show so i tried a few things it wasn't working i had an older obs i'm, I'm hesitant to update certain software that i'm used to and obs was one of them so i ended up updating it and then the display didn't show the video didn't show, so i had to do a whole bunch of uh so discord went out okay i had to do a whole bunch of different things so i did a little test like one minute 30 second live stream like about an hour ago just a test to make sure everything was running okay outler god how are you doing by the way um so you know 
hopefully everything will work out i got the latest version of obs running right now i had to you know direct the uh, set up some parameters make sure everything is working the right way <laughs> had to do a little last minute searching and reading and trying to figure out how to set up everything so if there's any glitches gang i'll restart the stream okay so hopefully fingers crossed everything will work out okay now let me give you a lowdown uh, before i give you guys uh, my little intro who i am and whatnot of what we're going to cover in the next couple of days we're going to read an article by robert fisk rest in peace robert fisk great great warrior uh this is robert fisk unfortunately he passed away in the last day we're gonna watch an interview with um craig murray on chris hedges um on contact let me bring load this up so you see we're gonna have watch an interview with this guy we're gonna read an article by john pilger on his eyewitness to the trial on agony of Julian Assange. We're going to watch an interview on um, with Craig, uh, uh, I forget it, I can't pronounce his name, Costanza, he, he show, he'll show up on uh, Shadowproof. And I highly recommend, if you're not subscribed to Shadowproof, subscribe to Shadowproof. Um, the main player here, um, what's his name? Damn. He unfortunately he doesn't say his name. I one one thing I would like to nitpick with people who are running independent news sources. Okay, so if you go to his uh, main page, right? You go to the he's got you know only two thousand. What a shame! This person, this person right here. Okay, uh, Craig Constanza, I believe he should have tens of thousands of followers, right? But if he ends up watching this or if there's any independent journalist watching this look when you set up your your youtube page or or bit shoot page or whatever page provide the links if you go to the about page there's no links here linking you up to anything right to his main channel to his patreon page or anything like that there's nothing up here linking him up so please do so it's the only way to make sure that independent media gets the support that it needs i remember robert miss he interviewed osama bin Laden. yeah he he interviewed osama bin Laden in the 1990s i think two three four times maybe right carlos okay damn so i'm er, early hell yeah i thought i was late that's awesome what's up chicho how's car doing well carlos um how are we doing today just finished the last part of the video game show and tell uh, that v64 my old cousin was part of the early hackers to the internet and he had one of those and never knew what it did that's awesome awesome the v64 was awesome fantastic mr he's mr hezekiah welcome welcome to our live stream so we're going to watch this interview we're going to read an article by pepe escobar now this is it was a pretty heavy article i'm going to brutalize this when it comes to names of the greek gods and whatnot but it's a brilliant article uh we're gonna watch an interview with john pilger okay a brilliant interview and uh if we get the chance in the next couple of days we're going to read an article by Patrick Lawrence and if you're not following Patrick Lawrence start following Patrick Lawrence and I'll provide all the links once we get to these things and if we get a chance we're going to read an article by Fidel Narvez and Ben Norton and this was released on October 12th uh, 12, uh, 2020 okay but we're going to start off with Robert Fisk's um, write-up from 2019 and uh, we'll while we wait for the twitch notifications to go out if they're going to go out maybe they won't go out because they don't like um you know the discussion <laughs> regarding julian assange if they don't the hell with them uh we will up be uploading this to youtube as well as bitshoot okay so i'm not going to self-censor this off youtube even though i know youtube nukes channels uh for doing this uh and they have nuked us as well or as soon as we start covering julian assange our subscription rates reduce or views reduce we didn't get promoted and stuff like this it is what it is uh this is sort of uh uh and 
a no-go for me. Uh, I will not censor uh, information regarding Julian Assange uh, per platform uh, dictates. Okay. Uh, the Welsh Dragon 2000. Did Robert Frist do a lot with Israel and Palestine? Seen a lot of people labeling him as anti-Semitic today. It, yeah, he did. And all those people that label him anti-Semitic are morons. Okay. They are either agents of the deep state. They are either paid propagandists. Okay. Or they are useful idiots. Okay. They they are the same type of people that consider Julian Assange to be bad, 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 Russia, 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 right? Don't pay any heed to anyone that labels Robert Frisk as anti-Semitic. They are not worth talking to, okay? In my opinion, in as far as I'm concerned, if anybody that came to my house turned around and said Robert Frisk was anti-Semitic, I'd kick him out of my house and I would write them off, period. There's certain lines that I personally will not allow people to cross. And they do they do humanity injustice while they throw when they throw around words such as anti-Semitic and racist and stuff like this, uh nilly-willy all over the place, as if they 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 are informed. Okay. But that's the common political smear in the UK. It is indeed, and that should tell you about who rules the UK and why they rule the UK right elder god the truth isn't popular these days just a government narrative that's what they like people to think i don't i think there's way more people believe in the truth than believe the government so julian assange was charged with a minor crime and then run through the ringer as a spy mr hezekiah julian assange julian assange's crimes was bringing transparency and accountability to power okay and power does not like that and they are crucifying him okay yo let's go no notifications for second stream only your test one hmm that's unfortunate that's unfortunate well we'll see if it goes out um let me give you we'll give it a little bit more time let me give you my intro who i am and whatnot i'll do the speedy gonzalez style i am on patreon patreon.com forward slash chicho chycho uh if you want to follow this work patreon is a way to do it i layer everything on mathematics and that is what it is <laughs> okay for those of you who are supporting this work through patreon thank you very much for the support i will be or i will be we are live streaming this on twitch hopefully notifications will go out on twitch uh let people know that we are live streaming because this is uh pretty important okay yeah sounds right carlos people love throwing around the word racist and anti-semitic so easily it's starting to become uh become this go-to for people who are blind and choose not to see realities yeah it's just, it's become the same thing as turning to people and saying oh you're a conspiracy theorist well, any, anyone that ever says you're a conspiracy theorist to me i just look at them as like i can't say the word on twitch right I, all of a sudden that person reduces their standing to me to a piece of poop on the ground right like that's that's the level they're at when someone turns to me and says russia this russia this russia this they're standing their intellectual standing goes from here down to here right down to a piece of poop on the ground when someone trash talks robert fisk julian assange trash talks the information being released on wikileaks they go i don't know where their standing would have been before they said that but their standing goes down to being a piece of turd on the ground okay that i step over okay that's the level uh that's the way personally i treat people who who are completely 100 percent brainwashed by corporate propaganda and that is the only way to treat people like that adults anyway if they're new to the world they actually are inquisitive they want to understand then you can engage them if they are propagating dictating corporate propaganda it is useless to try to it's not useless you can convert them you can inform them but the energy required to deprogram someone on that level is beyond what i'm willing to give them okay 
Robert Frisk is a British legend, and I am using that R word more often of late. Elder God, that R word, that R word is the perfect descriptive word for our society, and, and it has been for the last 20 years. I have been using the R word. When I started live streaming on Twitch, I was using the R word a lot, right? Or actually, I started using it. Uh, right at the get-go and then Donite and a couple other people said Chicho you can't use that word here I'm like what do you mean you can't use that word that's like one of my favorite words to use because it really describes our society and or people some people that live in it right and the education system and the political system it describes so much and we found out you couldn't use that word all right I love listening to Snowden talk he breaks down the fuckery of the government so well yeah as does Julian Assange. That's why they were trying to be silenced. I do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on LO Minds VK Parlor Gap Twitter. You want to follow the work, you can follow it there or join our Discord page. The links will be in the description of this video. I will try to extract out the audio of this live stream to upload it to SoundCloud. I'm not recording a lapel mic because we're going to be listening to a video, a couple of interviews. So it would be dead space if I record with a lapel mic, but I'll try to extract out the audio for this to provide it as a podcast on SoundCloud. And if we're able to do that for those watching on SoundCloud, thank you, or listening to SoundCloud, and the audio should be available on your favorite podcast uh, platforms, including Spotify and iTunes. Thank you for being here. Okay. Is the R word Republican? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no Carlos definitely not Republican <laughs> and we will be uploading this video to both BitChute and YouTube if you're on YouTube you're watching this video if for some reason we get the platform off YouTube subscribe to our channel on BitChute we get demoted when we do videos live streams like this because the technocrats that rule or trying to rule the flow of information from silicon valley do not like us sharing information and it is our duty to share the most important uh, things that are happening in our world and this is the trial of the century propaganda mm -hmm first attacks the language of the target population indeed in this case smart people and lifts up the r people the r people who propagate misinformation and propaganda for some reason it lifts them up and gives them jobs and gives them talking points and supports them because obviously they need a little help because they are an r right so it is what it is it is what it is and we're reaching a certain point now that uh, it is extremely important to make sure that you that we are informed which is one of the reasons we're doing this now i'm not sure if twitch uh, notifications have gone out i doubt it because uh, we we have about half the people watching right now that we usually do um i'm seeing a little uh, Oh, that's the what do you call it? The layered effect of the thing switching up way, way inception style, inception style, right? So let's bring this up. Gang, what do you say? Should we start reading? My plan is to read this article and then watch this interview. Of them to Oops. essentially watch this interview by the way how's the sound on this let's do a little sound check uh okay let me do the this british ambassador to uzbekistan when he publicly denounced the uzbek government's widespread human rights violations including the use of torture and the imprisonment of thousands of dissidents has daily chronicled what he correctly calls the most important trial of the century and how it is being conducted so how is the how's the audio for that gang is the audio good for the video that we played Ch 
Come on, Twitch, send out, send out the notifications, Twitch. I wonder if you can manually send out notifications on Twitch. I wonder, I wonder. Audio is great, perfect. Okay, cool. Audio is good for me. Also, hello. Hello, Thorn. How are you doing? It's great. Okay, fantastic, gang. Gang, let's start reading. Uh, we got a fair bit to cover. And uh, let's read the article, watch the video, and if we got, and we can do discussion. So after I read this article, we can talk about things. Uh, we'll I'll check in with the chat. We'll keep the chat going live here. Uh, so if anyone has uh, wants to talk about a point in the article, you can continue to talk, and it will pop up on the video. And then we'll watch the video. Uh, well, we'll have a little pause and see if anybody had questions. If you want to discuss anything further, and then we'll watch the interview with. Um, well, we'll watch the interview with um, Craig Murray. Craig Murray. Okay. Hi, uh, YouTube. <laughs> Void. <laughs> Awesome. And gang, um, Robert Frisk was very, again, rest in peace, Robert Frisk. He passed away today. Um, he was very active on the independent, um, and he had his articles published on a few other uh, places as well, Counterpunch being one of them. And he put this article out in June, 2000 and, uh, uh, June 3rd, 2019, The Final Punishment of Julian Assange. And is a sort of a fantastic summary of where we are right now or where we were in 2019 and if you want to know um you know get detailed information of what's going on with uh, julian assange and stuff like this and wikileaks and what they have done and whatnot on our youtube channel we do have a julian assange playlist okay so the julian assange videos that we have done are on our Julian Assange, WikiLeaks and Julian Assange playlist. And I forget how many videos there are now. This is the ninth open discussion live stream we're doing. We've done recordings of soft-spoken whisper recordings of uh, Vault 7, the Guantanamo Bay files, and um, the OPCW intro, um, the dis what took place there. Okay, and we've created a, some additional content on there as well, if you wanna get caught up with what we've done. There's, I don't know how many hours of video there, 20 hours of video maybe, okay. Uh, so there's a lot to lot to catch up on, and this article will give you a nice little summary of what this uh, this is all about. Let me have a little sip. <clears throat> June third. 2019 the final punishment of julian assange by robert fisk drawing by nathaniel nathaniel saint Clair. i'm getting a bit tired of the u.s espionage act for that matter i've been pretty weary of the julian assange and chelsea manning saga for a long time no one wants to talk about their personalities because no one seems to like them very much, even those who have benefited journalistically from the revelations. From the start, I've worried about the effect of WikiLeaks, not on the brutal Western governments whose activities it has disclosed in shocking detail, especially in the Middle East, but on the practice of journalism. When we scribes were served up this WikiLeaks potage, we jumped in, paddled around and splashed the walls of reporting with our cries of horror. And we forgot that real investigative journalism was about to dog was about the dogged pursuit of truth through one's own sources rather than upsetting a bowl of secrets in front of readers, secrets which Assange and Co rather than us had chosen company rather than us had chosen to make public why was it i do recall asking myself about 10 years ago that we could read the indiscretions of so many arabs or americans but but so few israelis just who was mixing the soup we were supposed to eat what what had been left out of the gruel 
but the last few days have convinced me that there is nothing far more obvious about the incarceration of Julian Assange and the remailing, rejailing of Manning. And it has nothing to do with betrayal or treachery or any supposed catastrophic damage to our security. Just a little break here. When this is, when he published this in 2019, Manning had been thrown in jail again. And Manning was released like a few months ago, right? So she was uh, she was held in jail for another month for contempt of court because we were trying to pressure her, torture her into uh, turning on Assange and WikiLeaks, and she never did. Huge, huge respect for her. Continuing with the article. In the Washington Post this week, we've had Mark... Thiessen, a former White House speechwriter who defended CIA torture as, quote, lawful and morally just, end quote, telling us that Assange, quote, is not a journalist. He is a spy. He engaged in espionage against the United States, and he has no remorse for the harm he has caused, end quote. So forget that Trump's insanity has already turned torture and secret relations with America's enemies into a pastime. No, I don't think this has anything to do with the use of the Espionage Act, however grave its implications for conventional journalists or, quote, reputable news organizations, end quote. As Thiessen clo uh, cloyingly calls us, nor does it have much to do with the dangers these revelations pose to America's locally hired agents in the Middle East. I remember well how often Iraqi interpreters for U.S. sources told us how they had pleaded for visas for themselves and their families when they came under threat in Iraq, and how most were told to get lost. We Brits, Brits treated many of our own Iraqi translators with similar indifference. So let's forget, just for a moment, the slaughter of civilians, the lethal cruelty of U.S. mercenaries, some involved in child trafficking, the killing of Reuters journalists, staff by U.S. forces in Baghdad, the army of innocents held in Guantanamo, the torture, the official lies, the fake casualty figures, the embassy lies, the American training of Egypt's torture, torturers, and all the other crimes uncovered by the activities of Assange and Manning. Let's suppose that what they revealed was good rather than bad, that the diplomatic and military documents provided a shining example of a great and moral country and demonstrated those with those very noble and shining ideals which the land of the free has always espouted. Let's pretend that U.S. forces in Iraq repeatedly gave their lives to protect civilians, that they denounced their allies, allies torturers, that they treated the inmates of Abu Ghraib, many of them completely innocent, not with sexual cruelty, but with respect and kindness, that they broke the power of the mercenaries and sent them back to prison in the U.S. in chains, that they owned up however apologetically to the cemeteries of men women and children who they sent to to an early grave in the iraq war better still let's just think for a moment how we might have reacted to the revelations that the americans had not killed these tens of thousands of people had never tortured a soul that the prisoners of guantanamo every man jack of them were pro prov probably sadistic cowardly xenophobic racist mass murderers the evidence of their crimes against humanity proved before the fairest courts in the land let's even fantasize for a moment that the u.s helicopter crew who cut down 12 civilians in baghdad street did not waste them with its guns let's imagine that the voice of the helicopter radio cried, quote, wait, I think these guys are civilians, and that gun might just be a television camera. Don't shoot, end quote. As we all know, this is escapism. 
for what these hundreds of thousands of documents represented was the shaming of America, its politicians, its soldiers, its torturers, its diplomats. There was even an element of farce which, I suspect, enraged the Theseans of this world even more than the most terrible of revelations. I'll always remember the outrage expressed by Hillary Clinton when it was revealed that she had sent her flunkies to spy on the United Nations. Her State Department slaves had to study, in, study the encryption details of delegates, credit card transactions, even frequent flyer cards. But who on this earth but who on this earth would want to waste their time studying the Tosh, emanating from the UN's hopelessly incompetent staff? Or, for that matter, who in the US wasted their time listening to Angel Angela Merkel's private phone conversations with Ban Ki-moon? One of the cables Assange revealed went right back to the 1979 Iranian Revolution and attached Bruce Lenning's ass assessment that, quote, the Persian psyche is an overriding egoism, end psyche, end quote. Interestingly, but Iranian students had painstakingly stuck together all the shredded U.S. embassy papers in Tehran in the years after 1979 and had already published Lagan's words de decades before WikiLeaks gave them to us. So vast was the first 250,000 document hoard which Hillary denounced as, quote, an attack on the international co community, end quote, while still calling the papers, quote, alleged documents, end quote as if they might be a hoax that few could discover what was new and what was old thus the new york times breathlessly highlighted the the Lagan quote as if it was an extraordinary scoop some of the material was not so obvious before the suggestion that syria had allowed anti-american insurgents to pass through its territory from lebanon for example was blatantly correct but the evidence of iranian bombing bomb making in southern iraq was far more doubtful this story had already been happily farmed out to the new york times by pentagon officials in february 2007 to be reheated in more recent years but was largely nonsense iranian military equipment had been lying around all over Iraq since the 1980 to 88 Iran Iraq war and most of the bomb makers who used it were Iraqi Sunni Muslims but this is nitpicking amid the garbage garbage tip of paper such tom tomfoolery is insignificant compared to the monstrous revelations of America um, America's cruelty the account for example of how US troops killed almost 700 civilians for committing to coming too close to their checkpoints including pre pregnant women and mentally ill and the instruction to US forces this bit of history from Chelsea Manning not to investigate when their Iraqi military allies whipped prisoners with heavy cables hung them from ceiling hooks bored holes into their legs with electric drills and sexually assaulted them in the secret u.s assessment of 109,000 deaths of 109,000 deaths in iraq and afghanistan itself a gross underestimation 66,081 were officially classified as classified as non-combatants what i wonder would have been the American reaction to the killing of 66,000 U.S. citizens, 20 times more than that of 9-11. None of this, of course, were, were we supposed to know, and we can see why not. The, most, the worst of this material was secret, but because it accidentally slipped into a military administration file marked confidential or, quote, for your eyes only, end quote, but because it represented the cover-up of state crimes or a massive on a massive scale. 
those responsible for these atrocities should now be in should now be on trial extradited from wherever they are hiding and imprisoned for their crimes against humanity but no we are going to punish the leakers however pathetic we may regard their motives sure we journalists we folk from quote reputable news organizations end quote may worry about the implications of all this for our for our profession but far better we hunt down other truth equally frightening for authority why not find out for example what mike pompeo said in private to mohammed bin salman what toxic promises donald trump may have made to netanyahu what relations the u.s still secretly maintains with iran why it has even kept up important contact the desultor, silently and covertly with elements of the syrian regime why wait 10 years for the next assange to drive up to us with another bumper truck of state secrets but the usual red warning light what we find out through the old conventional journalism of foot slogging of history via deep throats or trusted contacts is going to reveal if we do do our job just the same vile mendan mendancity of our masters that has led to the clamor of hatred towards assange and manning and indeed edward snowden we're not going to be arraigned arraigned because the pro prosecution of these three set a dangerous legal precedent what will be prosecuted what will be persecuted for the same reasons because what we shall disclose will inevitably prove to our governments and those of our allies committed war crimes and those responsible for these inequalities will try to make us pay for such indiscretion with a life behind bars shame and fear of accountability for what has been done by our secrecy secretly secretly shame and the fear of accountability for what has been done by our security authorities not the law-breaking leakers is what this is all about okay and this is by robert frisk and he was a columnist on uh, the independent which passed away uh, he passed away uh today really okay i thought that was a brilliant article uh from 2019 sort of laying down the the reasons why this is taking place right why julian assange is being crucified and uh, there are interviews with uh, robert fisk as well um and we might i might find one of them uh relevant specifically i found a couple but there were other people he was debating and the people he was debating they're the morons that consider robert fisk to be anti-semitic or julian assange to be a criminal or manning to be to be whatever right and i don't want to give them any voice on our live stream because we've already debunked everything they had to say right so maybe tomorrow i'll try to find an interview with robert fisk specifically or uh, full-on discussion uh, about julian assange of wikileaks yeah very elder god very informative article and for anyone that knows what's going on with the julian assange case this is a fantastic summary of what is really taking place for those those simpletons that still talk about how julian assange abused his cat this article will be will short circuit them if they even try to think about what robert fisk is saying in one paragraph let alone the whole article because they those people don't have the capacity for intellectual thought critical thinking right they they're not they're not free thinking human beings they are npcs non-player characters that 
are moving as if, as if they are real they're eating talking as if they are real free human beings but they are not right and you can spend your time trying to bring them into the light if you like and i actually recommend if you do care for people who still believe that people like robert fisk or manning or assange or snowden are the bad guys if you really care for those people that think these thoughts you might want to spend the time to try to deprogram them now because if you let their programming stay with them in the limit not even in the limit within a few years those people will be miserable human beings just the way society our current political economic system wants them to be because once they are miserable human beings they don't know what it means to be a free thinker then the government controls them centralized power controls them and it can get them to do anything including committing genocide okay so it is sort of a heavy topic but very very important gang i don't know if you guys want to talk about this and this is robert fisk by the way and rest in peace right now what i'd like to do is take a look at a interview by from on contact by chris hedges interviewing craig murray regarding julian assange's trial and this interview was released october 3rd 2020 like a month ago basically right and julian assange's trial initial extradition trial ended about a month ago so this sort of gives us a nice little summary of what at what took place during this trial so if you guys want we can uh, start this up and have a listen through it i've read and listened to all of these uh what i've put together here uh, except for the full uh, i read half of uh fidel uh narvez and ben norton's article on the gray zone okay um it's fantastic and ben norton i followed his work with uh max blumenthal and aaron Maté a lot and they do amazing work they do amazing work and i highly recommend if you don't know the gray zone okay subscribe to their they have a youtube channel they have a twitter feed you know if you're on facebook i you know i uh, I recommend not using Facebook very much because uh, it's garbage. Uh, but and YouTube slowly is going in that direction to a certain degree. They are censoring and demoting a lot of platforms. But I highly recommend um, following the gray zone. Okay, and checking. I mean, if you turn on notifications on their YouTube channel, you probably won't get their notifications. I don't anymore. Uh, that's been censored out. Okay. Eleanor, how are you doing? What's going on? We're talking about Julian Assange. Who wait, oh, Pigu? In my religion, Islam, we are taught that you can speak speak to the Prophet Muhammad. To be a, to be honest, I guess, if he appears to you in dreams. Last night he came to me for the first time in my life. I asked him if Trump will win or not, and he assured me that he will and not why not to be afraid <laughs> that's the way your dreams work well that's election news tomorrow we'll see what happens and uh, uh it really doesn't matter in my opinion uh if it's kang or kudos uh that wins okay it really it's irrelevant u.s foreign policy will make or break the united states of america and u.s foreign policy is not going to change under trump or biden okay gang let's listen to this interview uh unless there's anything else you guys will want to talk about regarding robert frisk article let's kick it up let's listen to this interview i totally agree with that, that appraisal Your dreams are dope next time I ask about that, where I should invest my stonks crafter. I mean, there's a difference in what the outrage would be indeed. Gang, interview. 
I hope the sound is okay. If you have problems with the sound, let me know. There has been a unanimous, virtually, decision among the, the mainstream media not to cover the case. Uh, it, it is quite astonishing. And yet, the arguments which are being heard are of vital importance to them. Uh, uh, and one thing which I think cannot be stressed too much is that the United States government has quite openly argued that they have the right to prosecute any journalist or any publisher who publishes US classified information anywhere in the world. And the United States government has openly argued in court that the, uh, the, the New York Times case at the Supreme Court in, in the Pentagon Papers case, uh, that in the dicta of several Supreme Court judges in that case, they stated the New York Times could have been prosecuted under the Espionage Act. Former British Ambassador Craig John Murray, who was removed from his post as the British Ambassador to Uzbekistan when he publicly denounced the Uzbek government's widespread human rights violations, including the use of torture and the imprisonment of thousands of dissidents, has daily chronicled what he correctly calls the most important trial of the century and how it is being conducted, the hearing underway to extradite Julian Assange, the founder of WikiLeaks, to the United States. Murray's exhaustive reporting, which can be found on craigmurray.org.uk, has become one of the few sources of reliable information about a trial that has become notoriously difficult to cover because of court restrictions imposed on the press and is being ignored by most of the mainstream news organizations. Joining me from London is Craig Murray, the Tacitus of our time, who also served as the rector of the University of Dundee and whose books include Skin Under Burns, Master of the Great Game, The Catholic Orangeman of Togo, and his memoir, Murder in Samarkand, which was turned by the playwright David Hare into a radio play. Uh, so, Craig, I've read all of your reports, which are really remarkable feats of journalism, um, you know, rivaling uh, perhaps Johnson. Uh, uh, and uh, there, you pick up patterns of anomalies uh, within this process, uh, you know, this uh, kind of burlesque, uh, this pantomime of justice. Lay out what those patterns are when they go after uh, Julian. Everything from the you know, Kromberg as the Holy Grail to these kind of strange decisions by uh, the judge uh, Baritza. Yeah, you're quite right. There are several um, underlying patterns of of happening, uh, which really throughout the trial ha have dictated what what goes on. Um, one of those is that the uh, witnesses for the prosecution cannot be cross-examined. So uh, right. there is a, um, a U.S. assistant attorney from the Justice Department, uh, Gordon Cromberg, who has given huge amounts of evidence, which state essentially that prison conditions of the United States are absolutely fine, that, uh, that there's not too much chance that Julian Assange would be held under special administrative measures, uh, and, and numerous other uh, you know, very contentious uh, statements. And he, he cannot be cross-examined on those, those statements. Uh, US uh, government psychiatrists giving evidence about treatment of uh, prisoners in, in, within the US prison system cannot be cross-examined. And yet the prosecution can cross-examine all the defense witnesses. That, that, that's one example of, of the kind of structural inequality uh, in, 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 in these proceedings. Uh, but it's by no means alone. Uh, it, it really is um, quite remarkable the way that uh, witnesses have been demeaned, have been humiliated, uh, have been assaulted as to their integrity. Uh, and, and there's been a pattern to this. Every single defense witness has had their qualifications uh, reduced, no matter how qualified they are, and a very large number of them have been professors of their, of, of their subject. Um, they've had their good faith assaulted. 
Um, it, it's really been quite quite extraordinary. V very difficult to see good people subjected uh, to this. Um, and of course, overall, uh, the you know you have the overarching peculiarities. For example, the uh, U.S. U.K. Uh, extradition treaty specifically at clause four excludes extradition for a political offence, and, and plainly. Uh, what WikiLeaks are, are accused of doing in terms of publishing uh, you know, uh, classified information about war crimes, uh, effectively, you know, that's the very definition of a political offence. It, it wasn't done for financial gain. It wasn't done for any other motive than the, than the political. Um, and yet the, uh, the US government and British government stance has been that that clause of the treaty does not apply because it is incompatible with the British government legislation that implements the treaty. And that's really quite extraordinary to say you are extraditing somebody under a tre treaty but that a clause of the treaty under which you are extraditing does not apply. So, so there are, I, I mean, they're numerous. I, 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 I could sit here for full e evening just outlining the anomalies in the case. Can you talk a little bit about the decisions by the judge? Um, she's been very interventionist. One of the things you've noted in your reports is that she actually writes up her decisions on a laptop before she hears the testimony in the courtroom, but she's also excluded uh, important witnesses uh, for the defense. Can you talk a little bit about how she's conducted this hearing? No, that's, that's very true. And I, I would slightly... Um slightly correct you to say that certainly she reads out from a laptop pre-written judgments uh, which are written before she hears the arguments. Um, of course what happens is that if there's a decision, a procedural decision to be made, both sides have submitted written arguments and sh she has those to go on. But then they argue the case in front of her in court. She's briefed on the arguments. Uh, and sometimes those briefings can take a couple of hours uh, as prosecution uh, and defence argue as to uh, as to which way this call should should go. And some of these are very big calls. You know, they're calls as to how long uh, the proceeding should last. They're calls as to whether witnesses should be seen in secret. They're calls as to whether witnesses may be called at all. They're calls as to whether there can be closing speeches. Um, uh, you know, there are many uh, key procedural issues on, on, on which she has ruled. Um, and in every case she brings with her into court rulings which have been written before she hears any of the arguments. So the entire charade of listening to the counsels arguing uh, is entirely meaningless. Uh, and the point on which I would correct you is that you said that she brings into you know, laptop judgments which she has written on her laptop. And that may well be true, but uh, you know, all we can say is she brings in judgments that somebody has written as uh, she brings in <laughs> on her laptop. Um, there's been a concerted effort to essentially keep this trial from being covered. Um, you're one of just a handful of people who's been allowed into the courtroom. I think you got in as part of the kind of family group, if I'm not mistaken. Talk a little bit about, how, and, and, and when you follow the proceedings, it's almost understandable because of this kind of almost farcical Gilbert and Sullivan type charade that's taken place. But talk about the mechanisms by which the British government has, has employed uh, several of them to essentially keep the media out. And then, of course, the uh, irresponsibility on the part of much of the mainstream media, which, including my old employer, the New York Times, who's just uh, ignored the case, uh, ignored the hearing. Yeah, no, a couple of very, very important points there. Um, the trial is heard in virtual secrecy. Um, there are 42 seats in the public gallery in this particular court at the Old Bailey. Only five of us are allowed into the uh, public gallery. And I'm, I'm there every day on the grounds I'm apparently Julian's uncle. Um, you know, in my, my family, we had people we called uncle who weren't actually uncles. Uh, it, it's not an unknown thing to have, a, to have family uncles. So, so I'm Julian's uncle for these purposes. But only five people in the public gallery uh, and then there was supposed to be video access for um, NGOs and the media. Uh, but all, I believe, certainly virtually all, um, 
uh, and I believe actually the whole lot of NGOs were cut off by the judge on day one. And, and that, that's groups as, you know, as big and formidable as Amnesty International and, and Reporters Without Borders had their uh, access cut on the morning uh, of the first uh, hearing at the Old Bailey, um, and in, as did members of the European Parliament. And the judge explained that she decided it was in the interests of justice that their access should be cut. And, and, but how it is in the interests of justice that Amnesty International should not be allowed to follow the trial is something which nobody has yet explained, uh, uh, which it's impossible to understand. Uh, it is open to the major media organizations to, to follow it, and, and there's no particular reason that, that I understand why the uh, Washington Post nor the New York Times can't get a video link. They would be able to get a video link, but they just haven't bothered. There has been a unanimous, virtually, decision among the, the mainstream media not to cover the case. Uh, it, it is quite astonishing, and yet the arguments which are being heard are of vital importance to them. Uh, and one thing which I think cannot be stressed too much is that the United States government has quite openly argued that they have the right to prosecute any journalist or any publisher who publishes US classified information anywhere in the world. And the United States government has openly argued in court that the, uh, the, the New York Times case at the Supreme Court in, in the Pentagon Papers case, uh, that in the dicta of several Supreme Court judges in that case, they stated the New York Times could have been prosecuted under the Espionage Act. And the, uh, the United States government has, in, in court here at the Old Bailey, absolutely asserted the right to prosecute journalists under the Espionage Act for possession of classified information, however they obtained that information. Um, and, and they have relied on, on a very controversial case known as the Rosen case, uh, where a, a, a judgment which wasn't actually about journalism, but which supports that line, uh, w was made, but wasn't actually ultimately progressed by the Justice Department because the Justice Department at the time thought it was contrary to the First Amendment. But this is an absolutely open and undisguised assault on the freedom of the press and on the First Amendment by the, by the American government, which in terms seeks uh, to reverse the New York Times decision uh, in, in the Pentagon Papers case. So it is simply astonishing to me uh, that the major media, particularly from the United States, have paid no attention to it whatsoever. Great. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation on the extradition hearing in London of Julian Assange, the founder of WikiLeaks, with Craig Murray. Welcome back to On Contact. We continue our conversation about the extradition hearing of Julian Assange with Craig Murray. So I want to ask about the superseding indictment. Uh, this, uh, there have been, what, I think three indictments, if I follow that correctly. Uh, so the United States, uh, or uh, you know, the, the prosecution for the United States, uh, suddenly uh, brings up a completely new indictment, which uh, I think the defense doesn't get until six weeks before the trial, uh, and it drops, the, it charges him with criminal activity, uh, you know, freeing, uh, helping Edward Snowden free from Hong Kong, which he was never charged with as a crime, this kind of stuff, uh, various, you know, breaking into banks and stuff in Iceland. And from, from those of us who are watching from a distance, it appeared that uh, the tactic was to get away from uh, any uh, idea that this was politically motivated, which of course it is, uh, but then into the trial with so little coverage, they suddenly pivoted, as you pointed out, to say quite shockingly in open court that uh, yes, uh, the, the New York Times and other publications could be charged under the 1917 Espionage Act. That is an act that uh, was instituted uh, essentially for passing uh, state secrets to a hostile foreign power. It uh, wasn't used three times between 1917 and the Obama administration, including after Ellsberg, although there was an abortive, his trial was finally aborted because of 
illegal activity on the part of the Nixon administration, and then Obama used it quite heavily, I think nine times totally. Uh, uh, so I found that fascinating. Why do you, do you, do you that was my theory, I'm, I'm curious as, as to what you thought, why they began one way and then just came out quite brazenly with this statement. It, it's really a very interesting question. I mean, you're right in that the, uh, the second superseding indictment was built in at the last minute. It, 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 it brought in a whole raft of completely new charges uh, relating to this very strange informer in Iceland. And that informer uh, is himself a, a convicted sexual offender with a child sexual offense um, to his name and had been uh, convicted of impersonating Julian Assange and of stealing money from WikiLeaks in, in an Icelandic criminal court. So we thought they would then you know, go that way. And, and the defense were not allowed time to prepare against this new indictment. The judge refused them an, ad an adjournment to prepare. So we, we expected to hear a lot on, on, on this new indictment. But in fact, we heard nothing whatsoever. Then we had a, a, a couple of days in which, or three days at the start of these hearings, in which the uh, US government concentrated on this line that prosecution has all to do with Julian Assange's collusion with Chelsea Manning and therefore it did not affect uh, respectable media outlets uh, like the New York Times or the Washington Post. Um, but that didn't go well, well either because a series of very, very impressive uh, uh, defense witnesses, particularly Daniel Ellsberg, but, but others as well, absolutely demolished that, that line of attack. Um, we then had this very strange thing that happened where there was a two-day break because the junior counsel for the United States claimed that um, her husband uh, was possibly having COVID and needed the COVID test. So, so the court stopped for two days. And that was a kind of time out. You know, the, the prosecution was plainly reeling at that stage for, for the number of very strong witnesses and needed a new tactic. And it, after that, that COVID timeout, uh, they then came back with this completely new tactic uh, of adopting the Rosen case and adopting this very aggressive line that any uh, journalist outlet that publishes national security information uh, is liable to prosecution under the 1917 Espionage Act. And, and do you have any theory as to why they, they made that change? Um, I think they weren't winning. I, I think their argument that there is a difference between Julian Assange uh, and a mainstream media journalist plainly wasn't holding water. I, I mean, you could argue, you know, they tried to make an argument that Julian Assange cultivated Chelsea Manning. Uh, but then so many witnesses stated, even if that were true, that would be no different to how, say, Deep Throat was cultivated during the Watergate crisis. But you know, but you couldn't really differentiate between what Julian Assange was doing and normal journalistic behavior. The, the attempt to make that differentiation plainly was not holding water. So they had to abandon that and say, no, it's, it's, it's journalistic activity that, that's illegal if it comes to releasing national security information. Uh, so you have now essentially an open assault uh, in a British courtroom against the First Amendment. We know the consequences of this. I think it's why you and I and so many others are so c concerned and mystified as to why news organizations like the New York Times uh, haven't, uh, you know, out of their own self-interest, taken up this case. There is a series of attempts to go after Julian on, com on clearly bogus charges. For instance, uh, that he was responsible for leaking the names of informants when we know that the key to the entire WikiLeaks file uh, it, that had the name of informants was released by Luke Harding uh, in his book. Uh, that he assisted uh, Chelsea Manning in uh, obtaining documents that Chelsea Manning didn't need any assistance obtaining and had already downloaded. It, I mean, from a distance, I just don't uh, why, understand why, uh, along with the fact that the U.S. prison system is a giant summer camp uh, where, uh, and there are so many cases, documented cases of abuse and torture, misuse of solitary confinement, etc. Um, 
But, but it, why are they clinging to these uh, charges that are just specious, that are just so patently false? Well, I think they're trying to give a fig leaf to the mainstream media to you know, give them some comfort that in some way uh, Julian is being charged for things other than journalism, like, for example, you know, releasing the, the names of informants, when, in fact, there's been a huge amount of evidence led by you know, very credible witnesses that, that Julian was extremely concerned uh, to redact the names of informants. There was a major year-long operation going on to redact the name of the informants. It was meant to last for another year, and that, as you say, unfortunately, it all came crashing down when The Guardian or, or Luke Harding and David Lee of The Guardian published the, uh, the, the key. But all, all of these um, rather silly smokescreen charges, which are probably not true, are all designed to give some, some comfort to the, uh, to the establishment media that, that, that in some way there's a differentiation, that in some way Julian Assange did something different to what they do and, and that they won't be next in line if if this goes ahead. But they're very, very foolish if they buy that. I, and I'm, I am genuinely astonished that even if they don't want to give it much media coverage, I, I'm absolutely astonished that the New York Post and the Washington Times and the major television channels don't all have their media lawyers in court listening very, very carefully to, to the, the, the line on effectively the abolition of the First Amendment being put forward on behalf of the United States government. You know, one of the things I found disturbing in your reports, uh, which is what's happened to your blog, um, and that there's been shadow banning from Twitter and Facebook. Normally, 50% of my blog readers arrive from Twitter, 40% from Facebook. During the trial, it has been 3% from Twitter, 9% from Facebook. That's a fall from 90% to 12%. Uh, and you, that usually got, uh, Facebook and Twitter would send you about 200 thousand readers a day. Now they are sending me 3,000 readers a day. Were you, were you surprised? Yeah, I, I mean, of course, anybody who is at all radical or, or, or takes any view of, of anything that's out with the, the official establishment view gets used to occasional shadow banning. But I've never seen anything on, on this scale before. Where uh, And of course, it, the very scary thing is that we we feel that we have achieved something where we, we, we built up our alternative media voices on the internet uh, to an extent that you're able to be heard. And then you realize that the big corporate gatekeepers, and especially uh, Facebook and Twitter, to a lesser extent Google and others, um, have the ability to just chop, chop you off at the knees and, and cut, you, cut you down. And so, um, you know, I, I was in the circumstance where when I was reporting in February, March, on the first four days of the hearing, when it, the opening arguments were held at Balmarsh, I was getting 250,000, 300,000 people a day at my website. Uh, and as I've been you know, writing up these, these daily reports now in, in, in the resumption, I'm, I'm getting 10% of that. 90% uh, you know, of my traffic has just been cut off by, by what seems to be, as far as I can gather, a, a general sort of algorithm command of some kind to, um, uh, to downplay Assange. I, I think it's as simple as that. I think anything mentioning Assange or anything with any attachment that mentions Assange uh, is getting shadow banned pretty well across all social media. No, we, we actually in the United States know that uh, he, the name Julian Assange is now in, been worked into algorithms by Facebook, Twitter, uh, uh, so that people are not referred, they're call, called impressions. Um, is this, I once had a discussion with Ralph Nader and he said, you know, if you look at us politically, we're actually conservatives because what we're calling for is the rule of law against people who are eviscerating the rule of law. And I think in reading your reports, uh, one of the things that comes through is just this uh, deep lament uh, for the collapse. Uh, our legal systems are always flawed, always favored the privileged and the property owners. Uh, but I, I sense within your reporting this uh, deep sadness, not only what's happening to Julian, 
the injustice that's being visited on Julian, but on the very institutions themselves. I think that's very true. I think that um, you know there was always, obviously, uh, an element of abuse of power, of corruption behind governments everywhere in the world. There always has been. But I think that the institutions of liberal democracy, to some extent, used to abide by their own professed principles. Uh, and now, sadly, you know, that's disappearing. And even uh, you know, a place like the, the Old Bailey, which is the place which has the, uh, the famous statue of, of blindfold justice outside it, the original one, um, it, it no longer stands for justice of any kind. And we're, we're seeing a horrific abusive process yeah. and, and you know, it is difficult you, you, you're right I'm you know I'm a former ambassador I'm not a natural radical but all all the things that I was brought up to to believe in uh, you know are plainly now exposed as, as hollow and a sham and no longer having meaning so you, you you're right I mean my blogs at the moment I've written with a deep deep sadness inside of me great that was Craig Murray author of the blog craigmurray.org.uk, which I urge you all to subscribe to as I have. Thank you very much. Thank you. So Craig Murray has been blogging or was blogging daily on the Julian Assange case. He was attending the hearings and, uh, and, uh, after the hearing, he would grab some food, go to his room, and write uh, about the case that day, and then release it early in the hours in the morning, and then he would do the same thing the next day. Okay. That's a warrior. Okay. Justice now is a price tag. Justice now is a price tag. And a couple things in regarding Julian Assange's trial that weren't mentioned in this interview. Julian Assange has been being drugged, right, while he's been in jail. So they've been injecting him or giving him pills or whatever it is. However, they're drugging him. And this is known. They've been drugging Julian Assange. Okay unbelievable right he hasn't had he didn't have access to his lawyers for the longest period of time in court he was separated into a into a plexiglass cage where he couldn't interact with his lawyers he had to get on his hands and knees to talk to them right through a hole in the in the cage okay and the the reason that the u.s government was going after him was changed for for two years or something they were saying oh yeah he, we're coming after them the extradition here is about this just before the trial began they changed their plea right it is a show trial that you would never have seen on this level in the ussr or any other totalitarian dic dictatorship or any other brutal government right this is as bad as it bad as it gets and the judge for this case also her husband is connected with companies that have been profiting from war it is the biggest show trial that i know of and we're witnessing it in real time okay just now as a price i'm keeping it simple abolition of justice by the one yeah abomination of justice by the one person heartbreaking heartbreaking unbelievable right to me one of the most heartbreaking aspects of this is people are still general joe blow who consumes corporate propaganda maybe guardian maybe cnn fox bbc nbc cbs all the corporate propaganda papers and news channels okay they've been programming people to believe it's okay to crucify a journalist that is trying to bring accountability and transparency to power unbelievable
as far as I'm concerned, the way that Julian Assange would become free if hundreds of thousands of people went onto the streets and surrounded Belmarsh prison, right? And said, free him now. And this was broadcast across the airways online. But unfortunately, there were only a few hundred people attending these things because, well, COVID control, right? Propaganda control. And people genuinely afraid of their governments, of what would happen to them if they defended Julian Assange. Gina, how are you doing? Greetings and salutations, Infinite Chicho. And greetings, Gina. I hope you're doing well. I'm not sure if notifications have ever went out <laughs> on Twitch, right? Um, but thank you for being here, gang. Now, I'm not sure if you guys want to talk about this. Oh, yeah, let me give you guys the links. Here's the link to the article by Robert Fisk. And again, rest in peace, Robert Fisk. He passed away today. Okay. And here's the link to this interview. Okay. And gang, I heard little bling blings and bling blings. Uh, thank you for the subs. Thank you for the follows. Um, appreciate them. Um, so those are the two links that we have right now that we've looked at. We read the first article, watched this interview. Now we have a choice. Let's read John Pilger's eyewitness to the trial and agony of Julian Assange, which is, and John Pilger was, has covered Julian Assange. He, he's talked to Julian Assange. Actually, I should queue up the first interview John Pilger ever did with Julian Assange. Okay. I'll try to remember to do that. Um, oh, I didn't bring a pen and pencil here, but I'll try to remember to do that. Um, if one of the mods, <laughs> if you remember, uh, if anyone remembers, please let me know to queue that up for tomorrow because I don't have that queued up. I do have an interview uh, here with John. Um, oh, I forget the guy's name again. Uh, Constanza interviewing this person regarding uh, the 10th anniversary of uh WikiLeaks releasing the Julian uh, Iraq war logs, which is basically one of the things that uh, the the U.S. government is going after Julian Assange for. Say it again, the information. Elder God, it's the first interview that John Pilger did with Julian Assange. Okay, so the interview of John Pilger with Julian Assange. I was meaning to do that, but. Uh, this morning, but uh, Robert Fisk's uh, news of Robert Fisk's uh, death um, got me sort of seeking his one of his articles that I wanted to read. I, I knew he'd written about Julian Assange, but I wanted to pick one that was it was in it, it took it to the core of what's wrong with it, right? And I also had a little bit of hiccup with OBS uploading the new version on it to get the display working and live streaming working and stuff like this how about we read this article by john pilger and this is and gang if you're not if you're not uh if you don't know who john pilger is uh you've never uh, you've never read real journalism you've never read uh, you've never watched uh political documentary to it to its capacity okay he's put out uh, documentaries about uh lots of political documentaries and one of his most famous ones is year zero um, regarding cambodia okay and it came out in 1970 74 73 or something like that it was it was broadcast in u.s airways once on PBS at like one o'clock in the morning and it was never ever broadcast again for I don't know how many years like a decade or two decades because the centralized government told PBS they were not allowed to broadcast year zero John Pilger's year zero regarding the war in Cambodia Vietnam war and stuff like this okay so highly recommend John Pilger as well as Robert Fisk and Craig Murray of course and Chris Hedges okay 
uh, I know people have asked me multiple times to share my news sources and we do that every now and then uh, every year or every two years I upload a new video sharing my news sources and all three of these actually uh, I don't think I had Craig Murray as uh, one of my news sources uh, previously but I will include that in the next one gang should we read this eyewitness to the trial and agony of Julian Assange by John Pilger unless there's any more questions and I think um, this you know this will be the article the last article we read uh, uh, for today's stream and then we'll continue with uh, the rest of the stuff tomorrow um, the stuff we have uh, planned out to read and let me give you guys the link to this article as well and this is John Pilger's website Eyewitness to the trial and agony of Julian Assange, October 2nd, 2020. Soaking in there for awesome elder God. John Pilger has watched Julian Assange's extradition trial from the public gallery at London's Old Bailey. He spoke with Timothy Eric Strom of Arena Magazine, Australia. Question. Having watched Julian Assange's trial firsthand, can you describe the prevailing atmosphere in the court? John Pilger. The prevailing atmosphere has been shocking. I say that without hesitation. I have sat in many courts and seldom known such a corruption of due process. This is due revenge. Putting aside the ritual associated with British justice, at times it has been um, evocative of a Stalinist show trial. One difference is that in the show trials, the defendant stood in the court proper. In the Assange trial, the defendant was caged behind thick glass and had to crawl on his knees to a slit in the glass overseen by his guards to make contact with his lawyers. His message, whispered barely audibly through the face mask, was then passed by posted to posted the length of the court to where his barristers were arguing the case against his extradition to an American hellhole. Consider this daily routine of Julian Assange, an Australian on trial for truth-telling journalism. He was woken, he, he was woken at five o'clock in his cell at Belmarsh Prison in the bleak southern sprawl of London. The first time I saw Julian in Belmarsh, having passed through half an hour of security checks, including a dog snout in my rear, I found painfully thin. I found a painfully thin, thin figure sitting alone, wearing a yellow armband. He has lost more than ten kilograms in a matter of months. His arms had no muscles. His first words were, "I think I'm losing my mind." I tried to measure, assure him he wasn't. His resilience and courage are formidable, but there is a limit. That was more than a year ago. In the past three weeks, in the pre-dawn, he was stripped, searched, shackled, and prepared for transport to the Central Criminal Court, the Old Bailey, in a truck that his partner, Sela Morris, described as an op open-ended coffin. It has one small window. He, it, he had to stand per, um, precariously to look out. The truck and its guards were operated by Serco, one of many politically connected companies that run much of Boris Johnson's Britain. The journey to the Old Bailey took, a, took at least an hour and a half. That's a minimum of three hours being jolted through a snake-like traffic every day. He was led into his narrow cage at the back of the court, then look, then look up, blinking, trying to make out faces in the public gallery through the reflection of the glass. He saw the courtly figure of his dad, John Shipton, and me, and our fists fist, uh, fist went up. Through the glass, he reached out to touch fingers with Stella, who, who is a lawyer and seated in the body of the court we were here for the ultimate of what the philosopher guy debord called the society of the spectacle 
a man fighting for his life. Yet his crime is to have performed an epic public service, revealing that which we have a right to know, the lies of our governments and the crimes they committed in our name. His creation of WikiLeaks and his fail-safe protection of sources revolutionized journalism, restoring it to the vision of its idealists. Edmund Burke's notion of free journalism as a fourth state is now a fifth state that shines a light on those who diminish the very meaning of democracy and their criminal secrecy. That's why his punishment is so extreme. The sheer bias in the courts I have sat in this year and last year with Julian in the dock blight any notion of British justice. When thuggish police dragged him from his asylum in the Ecuadorian embassy, look closely at the photo and you'll see he is clutching a Gore Vidal book. Assange has a political humor similar to Vidal's. A judge gave him an outrageous 50-week sentence in a maximum security prison for mere, mere bail infringement. For months, he was denied exercise and held in solitary confinement disguised as health care. He once told me he strode the length of his cell back and forth, back and forth for his own half marathon. In the next cell, occupants screamed through the night. At first, he was denied his reading glasses, left behind in the embassy, embassy brutally, brutality. He was denied the legal documents with which, the, uh, with, in, with which to prepare his case and access to the prison library and the use of a basic laptop. Books sent to him by a friend, the journalist Charles Glass, himself a survivor of hostage taking in Beirut, were returned. He could not call his American lawyers. He has been constantly medicated by the prison authorities. When I asked him what they were giving him, he couldn't say. The governor of Belmosh had been awarded the Order of British Empire. At the Old Bailey, one of the expert medical witnesses, Dr. Kate Humphrey, a clinical neuro neuropsychologist at Imperial College London, described the damage. Julian's intellect had gone from in the superior or more likely very superior range to significantly below this optimal level to the point where he was struggling to absorb information and perform in the lower average range. This is what the United Nations Special Repertoire on Torture, Professor Nils Melzer, calls psychological torture, the rule of a gang-like mobbing by government and their media shills. Some of the expert medical evidence is so shocking, I have no intention of repeating it here. Suffice to say that Assange is di diagnosed with autism and Asperger's syndrome and, according to Professor Michael Coleman, one of the world's leading neuropsychiatrists, he suffers from suicidal preoccupations and is likely to find a way to take his life if he is extradited to America. James Lewis QC, America's British prosecutor, spent the best part of his cross-examination of Professor Koppel dismissing mental illness and his dangers as malingering. Mel 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 I have never heard in a modern setting such a primitive view of human frailty and vulnerability. My own view is that if Assange is freed, he is likely to recover substantial part of his life. He has a loving partner, devoted friends and allies, and the innate strength of a principled political prisoner. He also has a wicked sense of humor. But that is a long way off. The moments of collusion between the judge, a gothic, gothic looking magistrate called Vanessa Breitzer, about whom little is known and the prosecution acting for the Trump regime have been brazen. Until the last few days, defense arguments have been routinely dismissed. The lead prosecutor, James Lewis QC, ex-SAS, 
and currently Chief Justice of the Falklands, by and large, gets what he wants, notably up to four hours to denigrate expert witnesses, while the defense's examination is guillotined at half an hour. I have no doubt, had they been a jury, his freedom would be assured. The dissent, dis, dissident artist, Ai Wawi, came to join us, join us one morning in the public gallery. He noted that in China, the judges' decisions would already have been made. This caused some dark, ironic amusement. My companion in the gallery, the astute diarist and former British ambassador, Craig Murray, wrote, quote, I fear that all over London, a very hard rain is now falling on those who, those who for a lifetime have worked within institutions of liberal democracy that at least broadly and usually used to operate within the governance of their own prof professed principles. It has been clear to me from day one that I am watching a charade unfold. It is not in the least a shock to me that Bar Barrett, sir, does not think anything beyond the written opening arguments has any effect. I have again and again reported to you that where, ruling, where rulings have been made, she has brought them into court pre-written before hearing the arguments before her. I strongly expect the final decision was made in this case even before opening arguments were received." End quote. The plan of the U.S. government throughout has been to limit information available to the public and limit the effective access to a wider public of what information is available. Thus, we have seen the extreme restrictions on both physical, physical and video access. And complicit mainstream media has ensured those of us who know what is happening are very few in the wider population. There are few records of the proceedings. They are Craig Murray's personal blog, Joel Lurer's living reporting on Consortium News and the World Socialist website, American journalist Kevin Costanz Costala's blog, Shadow Proof, funded mostly by himself, has reported more of the trial than the major U.S. press and TV, including CNN combined. In Australia, Assange's homeland, the coverage follows a familiar form formula set overseas. The London correspondent of the Sydney Morning Herald, Lakita Burke, wrote this recently, quote, the court heard Assange become depressed during the seven years he spent in the Ecuadorian embassy, where he sought political asylum to escape extradition to Sweden to answer rape and sexual assault charges, end quote. There were no rape and sexual assault charges in Sweden. Burker Burke's lazy falsehood is not uncommon. If the Assange trial is the political trial of the century, and I believe it is, its outcome will not only seal the fate of a journalist for doing his job, but intimidate the very principles of free journal journalism and free speech. The absence of serious mainstream reporting of the proceedings is, at the very least, self-destructive. Journalists should ask, who is next? How shaming it is. It all is. A decade ago, The Guardian exploited Assange's work, claimed its profit and prizes as, a, as well as a lucrative Hollywood deal, then turned on him with venom. Throughout the Old Bailey trial, two names have been cited by the prosecution. The Guardian's David Lee, now retired as investigator investigations editor and luke harding the russophobe and author of a fictional guardian scoop that claimed trump advisor paul manafort and a group of russians visited assange in the ecuadorian embassy this never happened and the guardian has yet to apologize the harding and lee book on assange written behind their subjects back disclosed the secret password to a wikileaks file that assange had entrusted to lee during the guardian's partnership 
Why the defense has not called this pair is difficult to understand. Assange is quoted in this in their book, declare, declaring during a dinner at a London restaurant that he didn't care if, if informants' names in the leaks were harmed. Neither Harding nor Lee was at the dinner. John Coates, an investigative reporter with Der Spiegel, was at the dinner and testified that Assange said nothing of the kind. Incredibly, Judge Bar Baritzer stopped G Goats actually saying this in court. However, the defense has succeeded in demonstrating the extent to which Assange sought to protect and redact names in the files released by WikiLeaks and to no credit, uh, credible evidence existed of individuals harmed by the leaks. The great whistleblower Daniel Esberg said that Assange had personally redacted 15,000 files. The renowned New Zealand investigative journalist Nikki Hager, who worked with Assange on the Afghanistan and Iraq war leaks, described how Assange took extraordinary precautions in redacting names of informants. Question. What are the implications of this trial's verdict for journalism more broadly? Is it an omen of things to come? John Pilger. The Assange effect is already being felt across the world. If they displease, if they displease the regime in Washington, investigative journalists are liable to prosecution under the 1917 U.S. Espionage Act. The precedent is stark. It doesn't matter where you are. For Washington, other people's nationality and sovereignty rarely matter. Now it does not exist. Britain has effectively surrendered its journal jur jurisdiction to Trump's corrupt Department of Justice. In Australia, a National Security Information Act promises Kafka's trials for, for uh, transgressors. The Australian Broadcasting Corporation has been raided by police and journalists, computers taken away. The government has given unprecedented powers to in intelligence officers, making journalistic whistleblowing almost impossible. Prime Minister Scott Morrison says Assange must face the music. The profi pr profidious cruelty of this statement is reinforced by its banality. Evil, wrote Hannah Ar Ardat, comes from a failure to think. It defies thought, for, for as soon as thought cries to engage itself with evil and examine the pro premises of principles from which it originates, it is frustrated because it finds nothing there. This is the banality of evil. Question. Having followed the story of WikiLeaks closely for a decade, how has this eyewitness experience shifted your understanding of what's at stake with Assange's trial? I have long been a critic of journalism as an echo of an unaccountable power and a cha champion of those who are beacons. So for me, the arrival of WikiLeaks was exciting. I admired the way Assange regarded the public with respect, that he was prepared to share his work with the mainstream, but not join their collusive club. This and naked jealousy made him enemies among the overpaid and over, -ta over -tal talented, insecure in their um, pretensions of independence and impartiality. I admired the moral dim dimensions dimension to WikiLeaks. Assange was rarely asked about this. Yes, yet much of his remarkable energy comes from a powerful moral sense that government and other vested interests should not operate behind walls of secrecy. He is a Democrat. He explained this is one of our first interviews at my home in 2010. What is at stake for the rest of us has long been at stake. Freedom to call authority to account, freedom to challenge, 
to call out hypocrisy, to dissent. The difference today is that world's Im imperial power, the United States, has never been as unsure of its metatistic authority as it is today. Like a frailing rogue, it is spinning us towards a world war if we allow it. Little of this menace is reflected in the media. WikiLeaks, on the other hand, has allowed us to glimpse a rampant imp imperial march through who whole societies. Think of the carnage in Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, Syria, Yemen, to name a few, to dispositions, dispositions of 37 million people and deaths of 12 million men, women, and children in the war torn, most of it behind the facade of the deception. Julian Assange is a threat to these recurring horrors. That's why he is being um, persecuted. Why a court of law has become an instrument of oppression. Why he ought to be our collective conscience. Why we all should be the threat. The judge's decision will be known on the 4th of July. Powerful article by John Pilger. Okay, powerful article by John Pilger, an extremely important article by John Pilger. Okay, uh, very powerful, very important. And Gang, um, he mentions Kevin Costanza uh, in this article, and this is an interview on Kevin Costanza's. I'm going to give you guys this link as well. I highly recommend you join his channel. Julian Assange is a hero indeed. And uh, this interview is 30 minutes long. So if there is, uh, you know, if there is no questions and stuff like this or anything you guys want to discuss further right now, um, we can. Hello, Bark. How are you doing, Lark Bark? If you like, we can listen to this interview or save this interview and we can start with this interview tomorrow morning and just have a discussion for the last you know rest of the 20 minutes of this live stream which might be a good idea maybe we'll because i don't have uh, you have pepe escobar's article uh to read as well and this is a shorter piece that i could do in 20 minutes but i don't want to rush through things and if need be i might do three julian assange streams uh, this is stuff that is important um, so right now I'm going to try to, uh, for tomorrow, I remember, Elder God, I know you're going to remind me, uh, John Pilger's first interview with Julian Assange. Uh, and there's a couple of articles that I would, uh, while I was reading these, that came to mind uh, that I have read in the past that I might try to, uh, you know, find uh, for tomorrow and just archive them and uh, see if we can get to them uh, and read them right uh i'm overloaded with all the u.s lies elder god i think for me what we are witnessing is extremely even though it's painful it's 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 positive that what we are witnessing come to light is is important this would never have happened if WikiLeaks and Julian Assange didn't come on the stage, at least the China government was on. Yes, I agree. That's the kicker. If I if I'm with two people, and they're both brutal, evil SOBs, right? And one of them is telling me I'm a brutal, evil SOB, and I'm gonna mess you up. And the other one's saying I'm your friend, and I'm here to help you. But they're the same piece of crap as this person i have respect for this person because they're honest and i detest that person even more than this person that is honest okay absolutely the u.s lies can make your head spin insanely the darkness of america america and it's not just the united states uh, lark bark it's central power look at the uk government this trial this show trial this farce this crucifying of julian assange is taking place in the uk it's taking place in the uk 
is taking place where the Magna Carta came to be, right? So it's not just the United States, it's the UK, it's Australia. Look at what's going on in Australia. Look at Canada. Look at New Zealand. Look at the 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 country that has the greatest amount of influence in all of those countries, Israel. Look at the show trials in Israel. Look at the show trials. Look at there are no trials in Saudi Arabia. Look at Saudi Arabia. It's not just the United States. It's every centralized power. And Saudi Arabia, I mentioned, is because Saudi Arabia is one of the greatest allies of the United States, Canada, UK, Australia, and New Zealand, right? The five eyes. They support the Saudi regime, right? It is not just the United States. It's the centralization of power that has become corrupt to a level where they're taking a journalist and they have convinced the masses that the journalist is the bad guy and the message is irrelevant. Unbelievable. The message that the central power has been brutalizing countless people across the globe committing war crimes torturing people killing women and children massacring people starving people people who don't like julian assange they have completely forgotten about the message they are propagating misinformation and disinformation they are not the people who believe the central powers uh propaganda against wikileaks and julian assange are not free thinking human beings they are you can think of them as whatever you want to think about them i got my own opinion about those people okay my government have bugged out of freedom yeah the uk it like really what we're seeing go down in the uk united states australia canada new zealand the five i countries it's pretty frightening okay if julian assange is extradited from the uk to the united states that will be the final nail in our coffin because what we might see is the iron curtain going up and we're going to be on the wrong side of it and this is not an exaggeration okay. i feel terrible for the uk they're living in hell look at australia look look the yeah the uk the uk is the uk but uk i can honestly tell you this was written you could see what's going on in the uk coming through tony blair all right why is tony blair why hasn't he been arrested put in jail and the same question for george bush cheney rumsfeld until we hold those that have committed war crimes in our countries accountable we will not be free of these totalitarian regimes okay waking up many sleeping people now yeah gang should we call the stream i tried my best to read things properly um, i stumbled on a few words and uh, i hope it all came out okay i hope it all came out okay uh, amazing information and i will definitely have the links to these articles in the description of this video and uh, tony blair is sitting in the high table i'm sure of it yeah tony blair man that guy unbelievable unbelievable right unbelievable mods thank you for being here thank you for taking care of business okay and let me put this back up and i gotta put this on because i need to have access to it exciting times gang exciting times grow <laughs> forest i wish we all could grow forest we could i guess we just gotta buy the land and make sure you get we get our government's back right 
Let's call it Evil Camelot. Evil Camelot. Where is Excalibur when you need it, Elder God? Where is Excalibur when you need it? <laughs> right? Gang, thank you for being here. And we're going to do this again tomorrow at 10 a.m. PDT, part 10, I guess, because this is part 9 of our Julian Assange stream, right? We're going to do it again tomorrow. Read some more articles, look at some more videos, okay, interviews, lectures, or whatnot, interviews. For the most part interviews we're gonna watch okay and um ideally i might try to find uh, a julian assange short that uh compilation that we might watch as well and if there's anything you think is worthy of us sharing uh post it on our discord page aside from that gang uh i am on patreon patreon.com forward slash chicho chycho if you want to support this work uh, you can support this work on patreon i don't put anything behind paywall everything's creative commons and there is a layer of mathematics behind everything vernon coleman has an interesting video on bnt okay no worries i'll catch it on bit shoot or something twitching jason how are you doing oh no i missed it yeah sorry twitching jason it doesn't look like twitch uh, notifications went out uh, but i'll load it up on bit shoot uh, most likely uh, we're going to load up the I'm going to try to get the personal finance and investing video stream we did up maybe today if I can manage it. Uh, so it's going to be personal finance stream coming up uh, first. And then we got two math streams I'm going to load up. And then we got the uh, entheogen. Entheogen I might load up right after the personal uh, personal finance stuff. So there's four. So after four videos, uh, the fifth and sixth one that are going to be loaded on bit shoot and entheogen is definitely not going to go on youtube so the fifth one uh fourth and fifth one will be on uh, youtube okay so you know that's the order i'm sort of going to play catch up uh, trying to get these live streams up and i still have some editing work to do as well we are live streaming on twitch gang we see the chat down here uh if you want to participate in this chat in these live streams as they are happening which is where you want to be at twitch.tv forward slash chicho live c-h-y-c-h-o-l-i-v-e mods thank you for taking care of business gang thank you for the follows thank you for the subs thank you for the discussions and thank you for being here do you uh do you hear about glenn yeah uh, glenn greenwald resigning from the in in intercept yeah and lark i stopped reading anything from the intercept because the people i was excited at first with the with the intercept because you know glenn gleamore jeremy scahill and laura po uh poister i think pointer poister point uh laura they started it but unfortunately they brought in mahidi or whatever his that garbage garbage person's uh gatekeeper of information is right and he's that guy's full of russia gate and propaganda and garbage so unfortunately they tagged themselves together with big money right a technocrat and i followed some of their stuff and i could see the garbage coming in and it was just a matter of time until glenn greenwald was gonna uh, step away from that and i'm waiting for jeremy scalehill to leave as well i stopped listening to Jam jeremy scalehill's pod podcast as well okay thank you uh thug my, my pleasure thank you Lark. yeah morning streams are not best for political streamers streams maybe um uh, maybe we'll do more later <laughs> later on in the evening yeah they're bringing in neoliberal nonsense is disappointing yeah jeremy's jeremy, jeremy Sk St scahill should go solo as well but he's being paid well right hopefully he has money saved up and he can get together with grand Greenwald, and they create a new thing we're in a renaissance right now we're seeing disruptive innovation kick in all of these platforms that are lying to the public that are propagating misinformation and disinformation from central power they need to be gone right and they are losing membership you uh, facebook came out and said oh they didn't get as many uh members joining right twitter their stock dropped 12 dollars since last week right like 30 percent uh 20 percent whatever it was 20 percent since last week because well people are going into other platforms that are free speech platforms right good riddance to them good riddance to them 
disruptive innovation i'm stealing that <laughs> indeed please share and share like i reckon 80 80 percent of chichonias are in the north are in north america yeah they are um, but actually there's a uh, there's a few in europe uh elder god there's a few in europe gang i do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on lo minds vk parlor gap and twitter okay you can follow the some of the stuff we're sharing there and of course participate in our discord discussions there's a few hundred people there now on discord sharing a favor information and talking to each other and challenging challenging each other and stuff like this which is fantastic right including me right so it's a good place to be to share information right lark bark another propaganda think tank what a travesty and yes i love the intercept but it's unfortunate yeah i will try to extract out the audio of this live stream and load it up onto soundcloud when i get a chance okay soundcloud.com forward slash chicho and any podcast any audio that we are loading on soundcloud should be available on both spotify and itunes and we will be uploading this video to bitshoot and youtube we're not sharing any of the political live streams that we do current events live streams we do or entheogen live streams we do on twitch on youtube they're all going on bitshoot however my red line is julian assange if we are since we started loading uh julian assange streams on youtube we have been demoted there's no no doubt about it shadow banned or you know they're not we're not being promoted i'm pretty sure people are being unsubscribed without being unsubscribed without unsubscribing themselves and stuff like this you can just see the data i'm a data freak right i love my mathematics i analyze data and looking at the data there's definitely shadow banning and censorship happening on youtube and they have been deplatforming people i'm not sure right now they're not deplatforming anyone that's talking about julian assange they're just demoting them right we'll take the demote hit we've taken it from day one we'll take we'll continue to take it for julian assange however those of you watching this on youtube if you find my channel disappearing if you find the space that we've created disappear on youtube know that we got deplatformed. go to bitshoot because we've shared information right we've done the vault 7 readings we've done the guantanamo bay file readings we've done the opcw readings we've talked about julian Assange. we've talked about the technocrats we've talked about this information right if youtube continues on the path that they're con continuing to go on maybe two years from now they'll say anyone that shared that information is off youtube just letting you know giving you a heads up okay and if you want to support this work on those platforms, you can like, you can share, you can comment, you can participate in the discussions. And if you're on YouTube, you can join YouTube membership. There's a button down there. And I believe if more people join YouTube membership, maybe we'll start being promoted more because YouTube is about money aside from censorship, controlling information, right? Long live, long live for UK. Okay? Be safe, everyone. Be safe. Boris the Clown will be held accountable for this for his r <laughs> youtube is evil gang thanks for being here and i'll see you guys tomorrow 10 a.m pdt pst pacific west coast time west coast of canada united states tomorrow okay i'll work on it all god once i start getting funds in, i'm gonna start building my own disruptive innovation instead of piggybacking on these platforms that are censoring information all right we're here for the long game brother we will we will bye everyone see you tomorrow don't miss it we got a lot more info to go through and i hope you have a fantastic day